Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Tonight I'm gonna to be showing you the candle in Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Um, a lot of you probably don't know that I started out this business a long time ago making candles, probably 18 years ago now, and it has evolved into a candle soap cosmetic business. Um, candles were my first love. I started them a long time ago and took a little bit of a break from regular candle making when I had kids and have come back to it uh, more recently. So it is something that I really like. I never stopped making candles. I just stopped kind of mass producing them and selling a bunch of them. Um, so my process has evolved a lot over the years and I just wanted to show you what it currently looks like. And I will give this video a full tutorial for you so that you can follow this step by step if you want to do the same thing as well. Um, this is something that I probably really would have benefited from a long time ago when I first started making candles. Um, I learned from books and I checked out books from the library. I bought some really good candle making books. Um, but I think a step-by-step -step tutorial that I could have watched online would have been something that would have helped a lot because you kind of have to go by trial and error, like which products work the best for you and all that. So the benefit of this video for you, if you want to make candles for yourself, is that you're going to get some expertise and um, some knowledge here that took me a really long time to get to. So I'm hoping that this is beneficial for you. And if you're just someone that likes to buy candles and burn candles, um, it's an interesting process to watch um, how hand poured candles are made. So I will link everything below for you so you can order all of the supplies that you want to um, if you want to use the same things that I'm using. Um, I'm also going to do this video in phases. So um, candle making is kind of a hurry up and wait process. And there's a lot of preparation. So I'm hoping to show you this step by step. And the first step that I wanted to show you are um, the jars that I use. Um, these are just 16 ounce glass jars from Uline.com, U-L-I-N-E.com. And they come with white metal lids, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, I used to use mason jars. And as the company has evolved and my look had, has changed, um, I've changed to these 16 ounce glass um, jars, which I'm really happy with. They hold uh, temperatures up to 900 degrees, so you don't have to worry about um, your glass breaking under the heat or anything like that because that is a really high heat you're not going to be using for candles. Um, so I've been super pleased with these jars, and then I am also using um, wicks from nature's candle supply and I want let me go grab my paper so I can show you exactly which ones I'm using okay so the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to wick your jars um, these wicks are CD12 CD12 wicks they are used for medium-sized containers that have approximately three to three and a half inch diameter these are a little over three inches these are about three and a quarter in diameter so I find that these CD12 wicks from Nature's Candles Supply Company work really, really good for the wax and everything that I'm gonna show you here. Um, that is something that's really important, actually. If you put the wrong size wick in your candle, it's either gonna burn too fast and smoke, and it'll draw all the fragrance oil to the top of the candle and burn it out super quick. If it's too small, you won't get an even burn pool all the way across, it'll just burn straight down. And so that all affects the way that the candle smells and looks. So do your research if you want a successful um, burning candle, do your research on what type of wicks you're using with the type of wax that you're gonna use and how large of the wick that you're gonna use. Okay, all that being said, I'm gonna show you how I glue these down. Let me go ahead and move you over here. So these are all my jars. The, the, Jars are not glued down yet. I just have all the wicks sitting in there because that is the process that I, that I do. I put all the wicks in and then I go through and I glue them down one by one. This is the way that I've always done my wicks. I just take my wick, I use a little hot glue on the tab, and these jars are pretty cool because they have a number on the bottom, which is exactly center. So I just glue it straight into the center and then I take a popsicle stick to um, push it down. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like right now and take you through that process. 
And there you have it. Okay, I'm back to talk a little bit about the method by which I melt my wax. Now, I melt my wax in a roast pot, a roasting pot. Um, the brand is Presto, and I really like it because it's got temperature controls. The lowest one being 200 degrees, which is exactly um, what I need to melt this particular wax down. Now, today, um, I'm gonna be melting down about 10 pounds of wax, this container holds about four to five pounds of wax. So I'm gonna to have to do it in two batches, um, which is okay by me, but I wanted to show you how I do um, melt down my wax. I do it in a roasting pot. I can control the temperature. A lot of things, books, other places are gonna tell you to do it by double boiler method um, because the temperature will not get as hot in a double boiler method. And if you're not doing a large, quantity of candles. If you're only doing a couple candles, um, a double boiler method works great and your wax won't get too hot. Um, but for my purposes, since I use so much wax, uh, the roasting pot is a good option for me. So I'm going to go ahead and push this off to the side. I have some wax in here already starting to melt. Um, I use Joy Wax from Nature's Garden Candle Supply. and. It is my favorite, my favorite wax. I have tried lots of different waxes over the years. Um, this one is my absolute favorite. It finishes perfectly fine. It doesn't, it adheres to the glass great. It's a plant-based wax. Um, they say on their website that it's a blend of soy, vegetable, paraffin um, waxes, and it's very clean. It just is the easiest wax, in my opinion, to use that I've ever tried, um, ever. So, and I've used a lot of wax. And wax, just a note on that, wax has come a really long way since I first started making candles. Um, the first type of wax I ever bought was in a wax kit that came from um, uh, Joann's or Michael's craft store and it was very, very poor quality wax. I do recommend if you're gonna get into candle making, do not buy your wax from the, your local craft store. Um, it's just not high quality wax, and I had all sorts of problems with it. I couldn't get it to adhere to the glass properly, and on and on, the list goes on. It didn't throw the scent properly. Uh, anyway, after lots of trial and error, um, I decided to go with soy-based waxes a long time ago, and then um, those were pretty good. Still had some problems with those as far as the tops of the, of the uh, candles getting mottled or cave in a little bit. And um, then I came across the Joy Wax from Nature's Candles, and I've got to tell you, you guys, it, in my opinion, it's the perfect wax for... Uh, your um, hand poured candle people. Like it's so, the quality is amazing. The only downfall of this wax is you do have to cut it. It does not come in pellets or um, flake form like some of the uh, other waxes that are kind of easier to scoop out and measure out. And it's fairly, this wax is fairly greasy, but it's made for containers. So that is something else that you're gonna find um, the waxes are um, different types based on what type of candle you're making. So if you're making a votive or the type of candle that sits in, um, you know, stands alone independently, that you put in a mold and you pop out, that is a much different wax. You would not use a wax like Joy Wax. Um, 
for that. This wax is specifically made for containers. It's soft, so it's got a lower melt point. So make sure when you're purchasing your waxes that you know what your wax is good for. Um, and read, read the manufacturer's description of the wax, read the manufacturer's um, recommendations and directions. That makes a huge difference. I can't tell you how many times I just, oh, I know how to make candles and I'd go and I'd try, do it using a wax maybe I'd used a lot of times before and all of a sudden we had a problem with it and couldn't figure out why. And then you go back and you look at the directions and it's like, oh, you really do have to follow what they're saying. It seems easy, like melt it down, cut it down, melt it down, get your fragrance, get your color and your additives in and, and pour it in. But really, um, if you're not following those manufacturer directions on the wax, you're gonna run into problems with performance. So somebody takes a long time to put really good notes online for every wax that you're able to purchase. So make sure, make sure you are looking at the directions and you know what type of wax you're buying. And the Joy Wax is a blend, I said, of paraffin, soy, vegetable waxes, and they don't tell you the exact breakdown um, because this blend is propri proprietary to um, that particular company, Nature's Garden. But I love it. I've compared this to 100% soy wax, which that's what I was using, 100% soy wax before, before I started using the Joy Wax. And I gotta tell you, you guys, this wax is the bomb.com. So I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah, I just think the only downfall, if I had any critique at all, is that it comes in a slab and you have to cut it. Um, instead of, a lot of waxes come in pellet form or flake form and you just scoop it out and put it in. But this is so worth it to me. The wax performs and works so good that I don't even care. Like I would, I cut this wax all day long. That's how much I love it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and fill the roasting pot. We're gonna give that a few minutes to melt down. And this wax, this particular wax, the Joy Wax, needs to get to 200 degrees. So we want to melt this down to 200 degrees. Again, following the manufacturer's direction. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that from warm to 200 and we're just going to let that melt down. digital thermometer um, I also use this one for my soap temperatures when I do soap um, I think I picked this one up at Lowe's uh, and it's so convenient I used to use an old uh, candy thermometer when I very first started making candles and that is also effective if that's all you have around but this is super quick and easy so I just point it in there gives me the little laser um, right into the middle of it and I have reached 200 degrees on this wax, which is perfect. So I am going to go ahead and turn my wax pot to warm. And now it's time for me to weigh out my first five pounds of this wax. So this is where it gets kind of tricky. Um, I like to use a lot of paper towel here. In case I spill, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I have some down already over here, but we're gonna go like this. And then I use this big container. Um, you can get candle uh, little pour pitchers um, from any soap and candle supply store. They usually come in like a metal, some sort of metal. I used to use those a long time ago too. I had one that lasted me a really long time that I got from a company that is no longer in business. 
but because I'm doing so much, I'm using um, this uh, gallon size container from Websterant Store, websterantstore.com. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure out my five pounds into this container. So I'm trying to get it close to my roasting pot here. I'm gonna tear out my scale and then I use a Pyrex and I just go into the wax as slowly as I can because this is very full and just start taking out little bits at a time until I can, um, so we're gonna be pouring in five pounds into this container. I have weighed out my five pounds onto my scale and I'm going to use my temperature gauge again to see where I'm at temperature wise and it's at 183 degrees now and this wax is awesome you add the fragrance into this wax um, between 175 and 170 degrees and let me tell you, it is, it's a relief. Like there's so many other waxes out there that you have to wait until it gets down to like 120 degrees before you can pour and it's crazy. So um, I'm gonna be using orange liquid candle dye from Sierra Candles. Um, this is because I'm gonna be using the luscious fragrance oil called um, pumpkin apple butter, also from Nature's Garden. Um, this is where I got my wax. Pumpkin apple butter is a luscious, luscious fall fragrance. Uh, my absolute favorite for soap and candles um, this time of the year. So I'm gonna be using the orange candle dye. A little bit goes a long way. I have five pounds in here. Literally one drop per pound is all you need. So that's what we're gonna do. One, two, three, four, five. Now, a little note on candle dye. Um, everything you add to the candle wax, every additive you add to the candle wax, if you add any hardeners, if you add any um, fragrance, uh, beeswax, stearic acid, um, fragrance and colorant. Those are kind of the typical things you would add. I don't add anything to my candle wax except for fragrance and sometimes color. Most of the time I make white candles, but for the pumpkin apple butter, I am going to be um, using the orange. And as you can see, it has dyed my, my wax the perfect orange color. Um, this wax will not set up this dark. So um, I like to use a white uh, spatula when I'm stirring here because when I pull up the wax and then I can look at it against the white, let me show you what I mean by that, that gives you a better idea of what color you're gonna end up with. There you go. But another thing you can do is just take a little bit of wax on your spoon, put it out onto a white paper towel, pour it out a little bit and it's gonna be a little bit darker than what's shown on the paper towel. And it's gonna be a little bit lighter than what's shown in the picture. So what I was gonna tell you about adding fragrance and adding um, colorant is anything you add to your wax affects the performance of the candle the way that it burns. So what that means is if I add in too much color and I don't follow the manufacturer's directions, I'm gonna wind up choking the wick on this candle. So that means if I burn it, I go to burn it, 
it's going to give me a very small flame, flame and then eventually the wax um, will be so thick that it will just burn out the candle. And, and I'm telling you, a little goes a long way. If I don't follow the manufacturer's directions on the color and I add too much, I mean, and, and just, and it doesn't take a lot to go overboard. So make sure, again, you're looking at all of those manufacturer directions before you do any pouring. Um, so you see the fragrance I'm gonna be using. This is the color I'm gonna be using. And we are sitting at 178. So while this is cooling down to 175 to 170, I'm gonna show you a little thing I like to use on my, um, on my candles, on my jars. So once I have my wicks in, this is cooling down to the temperature I need to add my fragrance into. I like to wick, uh, use a wick clip on my candle wicks. So that's what this looks like, it's a wick clip. It goes straight across the jar. It clips the wick in place like so. It holds it up straight when you pour and it keeps it centered. So after you pour the wax, your wick isn't gonna be floating to one side or the other. It keeps it right in the middle, super convenient, super easy, super cheap. If you're gonna be making candles, definitely invest in some, in some wick clips. Um, when I was using mason jars, I would use the wick clips, but I would also use paper clips, uh, not paper clips, clothes pins, because they fit across the jar perfectly and you could, you could weave the wick right through that little hole and just set it down and it was center. Um, these are too short for these jars. Maybe there's longer clothes pins out there, but these ones that I have are too short, so I do use the wick clips for this. Okay. So while that's cooling, I'm gonna go ahead and put my wick clips into my container, into my jars here, and just make sure that they're all prepped and ready to go. for this particular recipe again you're gonna to want to check in all your manufacturers directions um, this wax can hold quite a bit of fragrance oil which is another reason why I really like it um, this recipe is gonna hold an ounce and a half of fragrance oil per pound of wax so the other funny thing about these jars is it says 16 ounce jar, maybe it is if you fill it all the way to the very, very top, but I always just fill it to that lip because the container needs a lid and I don't want it to bother the wick after the lid goes on. Um, so actually it only holds 13 ounces of liquid. So I, kept up, I take my calculations into account there. Okay, let me go ahead and check my temperature. So if you just follow the ratio with this wax at a pound and a half, I mean, I'm sorry, an ounce and a half of wax per, blah, blah, blah. boy, I am tired. An ounce and a half of fragrance oil per pound of wax, and you should be fine. That's what I do. Okay, so we are sitting right at 172 degrees, which is perfect, so I'm gonna go ahead and tear out my scale. I'm getting my fragrance oil out, my beautiful pumpkin apple butter. Let me move this out of the way so you can see that going in. And I'm gonna weigh out my my fragrance. Now, for this five pounds, I'm gonna go ahead and put in eight ounces, which is a half an ounce more over five pounds than the ratio I just gave you. Um, and I know that that ratio will work, I've tested it out. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is a 16 ounce container and I wanna make sure I use up all the fragrance oil between the 10 pounds, so that's seven, that's eight ounces of fragrance oil per five pounds of wax, which is a little bit higher of a ratio than I told you, but not much. Oh, the overall effect will be the same. And I've tested this lots of times. That's the other thing you're gonna need to know regarding your product. Like, you've gotta test burn everything. So if you're using something that you've never used before, 
um, after you make your candle, you want it to set up for three days. Three days. Then you test burn it. If everything goes well and you're pleased with your product, then it's ready to give away or sell. Okay, there's my eight ounces. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. And then you stir. And you give this about one full minute. Stir, 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 stir. So this wax says that you pour at um, 165 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So we were at 172 when I poured the fragrance oil in. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and check my temperature. And we are ready to pour. We're sitting at 162 degrees. So I'm gonna move this over for a second so I can clean my workspace and I will bring you back in when I'm ready to pour. And back, um, the other thing I do here with my pour pitchers is I, I go ahead and I pour a smaller amount into this smaller container from Webster Out Store um, because I find it is super hard to pour evenly from this big container when it's so full. Um, it sticks to the sides when you're pouring into the jars. So I pour it to about here. And then I set that one aside. And now we are ready to start pouring. Let me just wipe down my work surface here real quick. Get some wax here, okay. Not a big deal, but you know, you know how I am. Okay, so we are now ready to pour. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to bring you in a smidge closer so you can see what the heck I'm doing. Um, okay, so here we are, I hope that's good. I'm going to put that here, I think right here. I'll pour the first one, first one here for you to show you. This is my favorite part. I love, love pouring candles. So you're going to pour slowly and evenly, as close to the wick as you can, but not right over the top of the wick. Not too slow and not too fast. idea folks so what I'm gonna do is um, show you some finished pictures of how they look when they're all set up and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all packaged with my um, special sunshine soap and candle company uh, logo packaging and if you have any questions feel free to chime in ask me down in the comments box below and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will be showing you the finished pictures in just a minute Hi everybody, I'm back. It's the next day and I'm here to show you how I trim the wicks on the candles. And here's the little white lids I was telling you about yesterday. Um, these are pretty nice because they have a little seal on the inside um, and they just look cute. They're metal and uh, white. So I just go ahead and I've already done all of these. So I'm just gonna show you the one. Um, I just take the wick clip off like that. And then I use, um, Fiskars sewing scissors. Any sewing scissors work good. These are like cotton core wicks and I find regular scissors don't work as well. So I always use a sewing scissor when I'm going through here and I go down to about a quarter of an inch and I cut it off and then I just cap it. 
and then a little note about my packaging and labeling. So this is the label for the pumpkin apple butter candle. All of my candle labels look the same. Um, they just have my social medias on the side, my website, um, the name of the candle, and my logo. And these labels are awesome. They come from a store called Online Labels. Um, it's onlinelabels.com. And for this particular size, for this 16 ounce jar, um, I you can go in and put in your specs on what size label you want on online labels and they have so many options for, for fairly inexpensive. These are the inkjet labels, so I can just print them off right at home. Um, it is the OL9350CK for their clear gloss for inkjet, so I can go ahead and print them right at home. They are two and a half by five inches and they just fit these containers perfectly. So I'm gonna show you how I um, label these. These candles, the little jars have a seam right here, um, but I don't really look at that seam anymore. I used to try to line it up with the seam, but now I just kind of hold it with my fingers here, center it, and then I just go like that with both hands. And then there you have it. There's your finished, beautiful, um, hand poured candle and it smells really good. So I'll go ahead and do one more for you and then that should be it. And there you go. Okay everybody, I hope you enjoyed the making of Sunshine Soap and Candle Companies. Um, candles. If you like this video, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, share, and just let me know what you think. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know. Give me a thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next video.